Now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Ready to get in our Father's Word. How fascinating this 10th chapter of the great book of Matthew. You know, Christ is uh, preparing to send out his disciples. As a matter of fact, at the beginning of, of um, the uh, chapter before, he called them apostles, which means the sent ones. They've graduated. And it is very strange that he saves the last part of the teaching before he sends them out to be the end days. That means he's teaching his disciples not only then to send out, but you today. Because the um, prophecy and the teaching as it continues beginning with the day's lecture in 1017 takes you yet far to the future. It takes you to the end generation. It takes you to the generation of the fig tree, which is now. Okay, so having said that, as uh, we are well into the second part of Christ's ministry, and we pick it up in chapter 10, verse 17, with that word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name. And he begins to teach. But beware of men. He didn't say beware of wolves and beware of this, that, or the other. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. In other words, um, a synagogue is supposed to be the equivalent, let's say, of a church. And a real teacher of God's word in a lot of churches, you can count on it just as they abused Christ. They would you. So beware of men. That's what he's talking about. And, um, of course, you know what being delivered up usually has to do with the, with the second advent. When just before that second advent comes, God's elect are delivered up before the synagogue of Satan when he is here as the spurious Messiah. And you will see that that's what he's discussing here, and that's why I can easily say this has to do with the generation of the fig tree. Verse 18, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, not your sake, for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Gentiles here should be translated nations, for it is a testimony against the nations, and ethnos will be translated either way. Okay. But So this lets us know that in, even in those disciples that he sent out, he included a message to you today. Think about it. Verse 19, But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. What, what hour is he talking about? He's talking about the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation comes only at one time. And that's when Satan, as the instead of Christ, is here on earth trying to tempt people into worshiping him by performing miracles, such as snapping his fingers and lightning come down from heaven, as it is written in Revelation 13, verse 13 through 14. You know, and you, do you know how many people will believe him that are unlearned in God's word? A lot. As a matter of fact, it says the whole world will wonder after him. And naturally, it is because they, are un they haven't read this letter of love that God has sent them. In the simple language here, beware of men. Be careful. In the end, they're going to deliver you up before the synagogues. And, um, it, it, but you can handle it through the hour of temptation. How can you handle it through the hour of temptation? Because you, Satan doesn't tempt you, and you recognize him. You find him, rather than being tempting, to be an abomination, uh, and he is. Uh, makes it easy to stand against him. As you can recognize by now, this 10th chapter of Matthew is the equivalent of, uh, again, repeated in Matthew 24, Mark 13. 
and he's preparing you for that generation, it makes it double important to you to know that he even gave this uh, lecture, this teaching, all the way back to the 12 that he sent out, or 70s by 2, however you want to do it. Okay, verse 20. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Now, I want you, to, I want you to really absorb that statement. It's important concerning the Godhead. It's written in Mark 13, the Holy Spirit's going to speak through you. It's written in Matthew 24, the Holy Spirit will speak through you. Well, what do you think the Holy Spirit is? It is nothing but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Here is your documentation. Wherever the Father and the Son are, the Holy Spirit is naturally present. For if you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father. And the Spirit of the two being naturally the Holy, the, the Holy Spirit, which is one. Emmanuel, God with us. So here we, we see, and many might say, well, I, I am so bashful and so shy and I can't remember things too well. You don't have to worry about it. As, as long as you have the knowledge to know and understand that the spurious Messiah comes first, then you are going to know that, Christ, that our Heavenly Father will speak through you and, and that it would be a sin for you to even premeditate what you would speak to the false Messiah. It will be the Word of God coming from you through the Holy Spirit. That's to say our Father's Spirit. Verse 21. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Now th this, is, this is really upsetting to some people, but it's really very simple. Have you ever had a relative of yours try to get you to join their church? Have you ever had a relative of yours to get you to believe as they believe? That's what this consists of. Because those that are deceived by the spurious Messiah will go to him and say, my brother or my sister really loves you. They love the Lord with all their hearts. They've worked for the Lord all their lives. And here now they're confused. They don't recognize you. Please be generous with them. Please have mercy on them. And they deliver you right up to him. And you might say, well, it says death. Well, who do you think death is? Do you know why Satan is called death? Because he's already been sentenced to death by Almighty God. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. You will be turned to ashes from within. He's a dead man walking. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, Christ died on the cross for, to, to bring us salvation, but also to destroy death, which is to say the devil. So you're delivered up before the devil by your own because they think he's Jesus, and they're, they're really trying to help you. You see, a father won't deliver his child up to death, but a father will deliver his child up to Satan thinking it's Jesus because he wants the child saved. What a way for salvation, huh? Throw him right in Satan's lap. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance comes from not studying your father's word whereby you are mentally prepared for the deception. What did Christ say? Beware of men, especially having to do with religion, for Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality. It's life. It's your life if you believe, if you have faith. So make no big thing of a brother betraying a brother or a father or a child. They've, they're trying to get you to join their church. Verse 22, And you shall be hated for, of all men for my name's sake. That's a good reason, very good reason. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Naturally, with the appearance of the, the true Christ, the false is taken away into the pit, as it is written in Revelation chapter 20, for the duration of the millennium. 
How precious the Word of God that warns you what to be aware of and what to be careful of, how to protect yourself so you're not misled. Do you know why your father does that? Because he loves you. That's why it, in the simplistic way in which Christ teaches that even a child can understand if you, if you remove the traditions of men and let God's word speak. Verse 23. And when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come, until I come and join you. De fact, de jure. Okay. Meaning I'm, I'm going to come, I'm going to join you. That's known as the second advent. Thus, the teachings of Christ to the twelve disciples when he sent them out. It's the same message. There's nothing new under the sun. The same message for you today. And it's very, very up to date. It is very present. It is current. It's happening. Verse 24. The disciple, translate that in your mind as pupil. The pupil is not above his master. Translate it teacher. Pupil, not above teacher, nor the servant above his Lord. That is to say, the uh, slave against it, above his master. Just, that's just common sense. 25, it is enough or it's sufficient for the disciple, the pupil, that he be as his master. That's to say, as his teacher that he learns. Who is the teacher here? It's Christ, of course. Can you take the message of Christ or can you be deceived whereby you would take the message of the false Christ? I don't know. That, you're, that's your choice. And the servant as his Lord. That, that should be what the desire is. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, that's the Lord of the dunghill, how much more shall they call them of his household? In other words, um, they... Um, if, if, if they call the Lord Jesus Christ master of the dunghill, which they did, naturally they're going to call you that. Why? Don't, so don't, don't get yourself all bent out of shape because, well, I just want people to love me. What people? You want Satan to love you? Grow up. Get a life. It is not popularity is one thing. But to be popular with Satan is an abomination. You know, if someone <clears throat> snickers because, is there a Christian in here? You say, you bet, and I'm proud to be one. You want to make something out of it? You want to know something? Ask and receive. You know, Christians don't take nothing off nobody. And uh, so it is. They did our master that way. They will do you, our teacher, they will do you that way. So don't get too ruffled about it. I mean, expect it. But at the same time, we're not second-class citizens, nor did Christ ever expect us to be. Okay, you got that? Verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be made known. Um, your victor, your victory comes from knowledge. The knowledge and the sh Christ said it, it's going to happen that way. There's, you don't uh, light a candle and stick it under a bushel. You let your light shine in truth. You keep your eyes clear, they mirror your soul. And people can see your soul when they look at you and they know it is clear and they know it is a, that you are a servant. That you may be a pupil, but at the same time you're a servant of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ, the head teacher, he that sent the word, he that gives us the word that gives us life, life not just in the flesh, but eternal. Verse 27, what I tell you in darkness, that speak you in light. What is, that takes action on your part, friend. If Christ gives you a truth, speak it, all right, in light. 
Don't make a fool out of yourself. Don't become a religious fanatic, but share truth with those that ask. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. The housetop, of course, was the usual place of proclamation in this time. They didn't have television or radio, and that's, that's where the address came from. So what, what is that saying then? He's saying, if you adhere, I may use you. Don't deny me. For if you de to deny the Holy Spirit, if you know better, is the unpardonable sin. So you want to be very careful about that. He said, if I choose to use you, I will speak to you. And don't you be afraid to, pro to proclaim it. And of course, this looks forward to that time when he utilizes you as a testimony to bring forth the truth. Let me tell you something. Some of you have known since you were a child there was more to God's Word than you had been taught. And the simplicity of Christ's teachings brings that out to where He can use you. Does that mean I'm special? No, it means that Satan didn't deceive you in the first earth age and he's not about to now. You'll have no part of it. You will stand against him. You will stand as a champion for the Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't make you special. It just makes you true. And the truth is what sets you free. Verse 28. Listen carefully. M many people get fear in their heart. Listen to the teachings of Almighty God. Verse 28 reads, And fear not them which kill the body, that's to say the flesh, but are not able to kill the soul. There's not a way in the world that Satan or any of his children can kill your soul. It's impossible. can't be done. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, that's, uh, there's only one that can kill your soul or cause your soul to perish in hell, as it is written, the second death in Revelation chapter 20, at the end of the millennium. Many people think, well, I'm going to heaven. Yes, praise God, going to heaven, going to sit there at the, near the throne of God, and I'm going to look over at that lake, and they're screaming and yelling and frying like a fresh pack of bacon, and that's heaven. <laughs> Woo, that doesn't sound appealing to me. Is it to you, really? I mean, you want to go to heaven and watch people fry forever? I mean, I don't, I don't really know what kind of God you would serve if that were the case. This verse documents what happens in that lake of fire that is mentioned and why it is tagged and named and properly translated from the Greek into English, second death. First death, death of the flesh. Second death, death of the soul. May it never happen to you. May your soul live eternal. For you're not going to, when he says, I will blot them out, it means you won't even remember them, that they ever existed. That's why there will be no tears. God loves his children. Fear not those that can threaten you or destroy the flesh. But you serve the teacher, our father, who has control and owns your soul. Ezekiel 18, 4, God owns all souls. You don't give him your soul. He's already got it, friend. And it's his to do with as he chooses by your actions. So uh, you don't have to be afraid because God looks over you. God takes care of you. God protects you, guides you, especially if you are one of his anointed if you have the seal of God in your forehead, which simply means this word, this letter, with understanding in your mind, you can't be had by Satan because he cannot deceive you. Deception is a terrible thing, and ignorance is what brings it forth, ignorance of God's word. Christ came and the word became flesh and lived among us and taught us as he's doing here. See that he did it for nothing in your case, but brings you eternal life. 
and that you have nothing to worry about. He's going to take care of your soul. Okay, 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a fawfen, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father, without your father's knowledge to complete the thought? God knows when one little sparrow falls. Do you think he doesn't know it when you hurt? Do you think he doesn't know it when you're unhappy and when you're in pain? Naturally, he knows it. You're his child. And he loves you. He cares. Let him know that you love him in return. It makes his day. Verse 30. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. He knows all about you. Even that frightens some people. Don't worry. There's no secrets. He can read your mind. That's why repentance is a wonderful thing. All right, And he... He loves it when you repent so that he can forgive and say, Child, follow me. Let me lead you, guide you. Follow me. Don't follow the world. Don't follow the ways of the world. Follow him. Did he say, Father, take them out of the world? No, he did not say that. We have a purpose here in this world. It's to... Take this same word as it said that the teacher taught the pupil and become the teacher and teach people salvation whereby they're not deceived. God loves his children. What he's saying here, be brave. I, I know how many hairs you have. Nobody can hurt you without my knowledge. Verse 31. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. You're precious to him. As one of God's elect. Well, does that make you more precious than anyone? No, he loves all of his children. But whom he gives much, he expects much from. Don't forget that. Verse 32. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. It's in the book. When this one comes up and is judged, it's in the book. God knows it. Okay. It is written. And for you, it's a time of reward, not punishment. For when you repent, whatever sin it was, it was in the book. It's erased. It's called blotted out. And you need to know what blotted out means. It means it doesn't exist anymore and I don't want to hear about it again. That's what God says. Verse 33, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. And there will be many, as he warned us in a chapter or so uh, before. Many will come to him when he returns and say, Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I've healed in your name and we've cast out devils. And he said, You get out of my sight. I never knew you. You see, Christ is coming back, and he expects a virgin bride. People that hop in the sack with the false Messiah, thinking he is Christ's return, he doesn't want anything to do with you. Okay, You blew it. You were deceived. You're no longer worthy in that case. So... Do I say that to cause the downhearted to be hearted to be more downhearted than ever? No. So it doesn't happen to you. So you're not deceived. Don't deny him. You see, uh, why I have to beef this up? If you know the truth, and you're delivered up before death, which is to say the devil and you disallow the spirit of your Father which is in heaven, verse 20, to speak through you, that's the unpardonable sin. And you'd better fear he who can destroy both the body and the soul. I do not believe it is a possibility. But he said it, it is written, those that deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. You're finished, done, kaput, over. So 
uh, when, when to whom much is given, much is required. I, I don't consider it to be much because I cannot understand how that any person that knows Satan and he's seducing all of our people all over the world and you would have the opportunity to allow God's Spirit through you to tone him down that you wouldn't jump at the chance. I don't think anyone can be detoured from that mission, from that purpose. I do not believe it is possible that it will ever happen. I know too many of you, and I know some of you, if anything, you start planning what you're going to say on your own. I don't know what I'll tell old Slewfoot. No, you don't. And it's almost a sin to do that. Now just settle down and let God be God and you be yourself. Do not ever be ashamed of the fact that you're a Christian. You be happy about it. To be a Christian is a Christ man. No gender involved in this. You wear it as a badge of honor. For it means you're a child of the living God. Always doing what is fair and right and just. That's called righteousness. Verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. Oh, dear Lord in heaven. Here's Jesus coming not to bring peace, but a sword. He's got it in his hand. What is the sword? Revelation 1, what is it, 16 or 17? Christ's tongue is a two-edged sword, and it cuts both ways. It's called truth. It's called knowledge. It's called understanding. And, uh, but he did not come to bring peace with Satan. He did not come to make peace between evil people that follow Satan willingly and lovingly instead of him. He does not um, intend to bring peace to those that don't deserve it, that haven't earned it. You see, we are coming to a place here at the second advent of culling out those that caused trouble in the beginning because we don't want their trouble in the eternity. That's what it's about. It, is it severe? It's final. But that's as it should be. The Lord's sword never hurt anyone. The Lord's sword is the truth, and the truth sets you free. Do you know how to use that sword? That's the sword Jesus said you'd better acquire. It's the Word of God. It is powerful. It is strong. It will protect you. Verse 35, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, meaning those that are deceived uh, apart from those that uh, love him, that know who this fake is. That's Beware of men. They'll deceive you. See that you check them out. You know, he, he gave you a way not uh, too many chapters back. He said, hey, it's as simple is if you go to an orange tree and you don't get an orange off of it, if you get an apple, there's something going on. By their fruit you shall know them. If their fruit does not align with the fruit of the teacher, they're not a disciple, they're not a pupil. And as a teacher, if their teachings do not align with the teachings of Jesus Christ, they're not of Christ. They're of the traditions of men. Take the sword to them. Cut the ground out from under them. I speak as a teacher of God's word. Use his sword, which is his tongue, which is his word, which is the word of God. Unfortunately, truth does cause trouble in some families, it's, but it is to the healing of the family if it is adhered to. Verse 36, And a man's foes shall be they of his own house for whole. And do you know something? The sad part about it is it's because of love. A family, you know, you love your brother. And 
if you are deceived into thinking that Satan is really Christ, that is to say, instead of Christ, and you, you, you've been had, you're, you're going you're gonna to beg for your brother's life, but you're turning him into the devil, that is to say, delivering him up. And that's fine. In many cases, that's what the intended purpose is, whereby God can use you for a witness. It is wonderful when a whole household sees the truth and that love binds. It can never be hurt. It can never be harmed. That it cannot put it together. So many people in households let Satan slip in and just make fools out of the whole bunch. Laughs at them. Look at them go. Children of God. God's servants. Look at them go. God, look at them. These are your dandies. Don't, don't, don't ever give Satan that opportunity. Keep your household pure and clear. 37. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 38. And he that taketh not his cross and, and followeth after me is not worthy of me. And of course, in Luke 14, 26, he says he, it is translated, and it is a mistranslation. It says those that will not hate their mother, wife, uh, father, uh, but the word should be translated love less. In other words, he died for you. He is your eternal father. You owe him. So you should love him more than anyone else. That does not mean that your heart isn't big enough that you can love your family with all your heart and yet at the same time give God the number one place because he deserves it. The son deserves it also. So you need to love him more and his truth on behalf of your whole family so that you can draw them into the truth that they are not deceived if it be possible. Well, our Father's Word is so precious. Don't ever let some would-be revolving rev take this Scripture and say, I had to leave my wife because of the Scripture. That's not what it means at all. You know, and they come knocking on doors. Because I love Jesus, I have to leave him more than I had to hate my wife. Well, that's not, you know... They show their ignorance and translation as far as the Greek is concerned to love less. Incidentally, he that won't take up his cross, you think he's talking about wearing a little cross around your neck, my friend? Uh-uh. He's talking about the one you put on your shoulder to be nailed to. You've got to be serious. He does not expect you to be crucified, but he was crucified for you. So you better be willing to let it all hang out for him. Put him number one. It's a thing of love, my friend. Not of, not of doubt, not of fear. For you don't have to fear the world. The world is short-lived. And every hair on your head is numbered. God said, touch not mine anointed. And he meant it. So we're in good hands. We're in God's hands. Don't ever forget it. All right. Bless your heart, you listen a moment, won't you please?